I hope you're not discouraged at this point of understanding that the Bible is difficult to learn, but also very learnable. Um, it takes a lifetime, but you can also find its truth very quickly. Um, I'm going to give you a few um, kind of methods that you might that you might learn uh, that you might do to get used to the Bible, and you can change these up over time. You can use uh, multiple ones at the same time. Um, these are just things that that I think would be helpful, uh, and at some point you should you should do all of them. Um, so I call this a raft. <laughs> I call it a raft for learning the Bible. I use that because um, when we think of a raft, a raft is usually built of multiple pieces, right? Um, I can't think of any good solid raft that's, you know, you don't just throw a, a pallet out and, and jump on it and call it a raft. Um, I think you'd sink and so you, you know, you add barrels, you add the things, you, I don't know, I never built a raft that I can think of, but rafts are made of different pieces. All of those together uh, help us help us float along, right? And so when you learn the Bible, I'm going to give you a few things that are going to be helpful and, and try, try all of these. And then I'm going to give you some actual methods of reading the Bible itself um, and a couple things that I would advise you not to do. Um, a raft. So one thing that's helpful is preaching. Um, preaching is coming and, and coming into a sanctuary with a Bible teacher. A, you don't have to be a sanctuary. Ours is a sanctuary, that's why I said that. Um, a Bible teacher, a pastor who is educated in the Bible um, and able to teach you. And so the Bible, the Bible affirms that that is something that's very necessary. In several places in the New Testament, it talks about that. Uh, and so that's something that we do. There's a, there's a place for teach me the word, right? Teach me about the Bible. And so um, don't substitute, by the way, don't substitute um, our... Don't, 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 don't make it one thing. So don't take the, hey, I'm in fresh faith class. I never need to go hear preaching. Uh, or I read my Bible on my own. I never hear, need to hear preaching. Um, you do. But don't also say, well, I, I got preaching, and so I never need to read it on my own, and I never need to do anything else. Um, I heard from a pastor. That's the best you can get, right? You want multiple things here, right? Um, factual study. And I put in there commentaries. Factual study means uh, when I talk about th- things you hear you know historical context and you're like what does that mean and what what was the culture of the day or what was going on at the time or when it talks about this thing in the bible that's really obscure this place or something what 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 is it talking about well that's where there are bible scholars and we call them commentaries because they comment on kind of like sports right they have a commentary commentator you have people who will commentate on the bible to help you understand what's going on you're seeing the same, it is like sports. You're watching the same, you're watching the same play on the field they're watching, but they, they probably have a lot more understanding of what you're seeing than you, than you do. And so they're helping you see what, they're helping you make sense of what you're seeing, okay? Um, they're filling in gaps for you. That's what, that's what commentaries are about. They're, they're filling in, commentaries are more factual. Um, here's what's happening. Here's where it connects with other parts of the Bible. Um, and so that, that can be helpful. If you wanted an easy to read one, I would do the Bible knowledge commentary. Um, you have to invest a little bit of money, but it's only two, two volumes, Old Testament, New Testament, very readable. The other one that I I like is the new Bible commentary. That's the name of it. The new Bible commentary. Those are both, those are both good. Um, factual study, solo reading, reading on your own. There's a great thing. I can't tell you how valuable that is, even though it's hard for often a long time. Much, much of what I learned in the Bible, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm amazing to my horn. Andrew's an amazing Bible scholar, but I I know the Bible fairly well. Um, I want to know it more and I'm always learning, but I, I, I I I have some understanding of what's there. Most of that comes from me reading it. It came from me reading it. I started when I was young. I was blessed to be raised in the church. That may not be your, your story. You may feel like, gosh, I wasted so much time. I'm just now getting into the Bible and I'm older. No, God, God is going to redeem that, show you things. I had the privilege of, of being introduced to the Bible when I was young and really started reading it and often didn't know what I was, I was seeing and didn't get it and misunderstood some stuff. But by reading and reading and reading, um, really, I, 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 
it's amazing how much you can learn just, just simply by doing that, okay? Uh, memorization. We often in Sunday school or Christian, Christian schools, we have kids memorize uh, verses and we stop doing that when we're, when we're adults, which is kind of silly. Um, so I have, for each lesson, you're going to get a memory verse. I'm trying to memorize more scripture as well in my life. And so uh, we're going to try to do that together. But that's a great one. That also helps me think about it over time. Uh, it helps me if somebody asks me. I have, I have a, a verse to give because it's, it's in my sort of memory banks, right? Devotional reading, we defined that term devotional earlier in the lesson. Devotional reading would be a book to, to um, it's almost like uh, a person teaching you what's there, but it's a book. So some of these are longer books, um, and they could be about a, to- a particular topic uh, in the Bible. Some are more broken up, as I said in the beginning, a devotional where it might be every day you read a small portion of scripture, it gives you a small lesson, uh, maybe a, a prayer you could pray, maybe some questions to think about. We would call that a devotional, and that can be helpful. Or books you know, by Christian authors helping you uh, understand more of some of the topics that are in the Bible. Those are good. I wouldn't replace reading my Bible with reading those, uh, but they can come alongside well. A discussion with others in the church. It's amazing how much sometimes you learn of the Bible just by talking with other people. Go beyond, as a newer believer, go beyond your comfort zone. That might be like, I can't get in a conversation about the Bible yet because I don't know enough about it. That's okay. Listen in. Listen to people who have a lot to say. And uh, maybe you'll find, oh, you know, I, I was reading this. I could share something too. And then share it. That, that's awesome. Um, and, but getting in conversations with people can be a great way to learn uh, as well. Don't, don't, don't be overly intimidated by people who sound like they know a lot learn from them, right? Um, And then living according to the text. As I said previously, you know, there are things in our lives where it doesn't really come alive until we live it. It doesn't, until the rubber hits the road, does this passage really go, come alive and we can say, oh, that's what that means. Um, And so living it is, is a way that we learn it. We can know the idea of what it's talking about, but when I actually have to do that thing, I will learn it so much uh, better. Uh, a few methods of reading the Bible. One is journaling, um, so you can can read a passage. Again, passage is vague. It, it doesn't really. A passage is just a section of scripture. It doesn't really matter how long. Um, you can read a, a section and maybe write your thoughts or some prayer that you would have after after the fact. Um, something you saw there. Some some questions you have. You can kind of journal that way. What is God showing you? Something like that. That might be something you'd uh, like to do. Um, you can get books that will, um, that will help you understand. Again, we talked about, uh, commentaries and devotionals. There's one called Search the Scriptures, um, and it's really an interesting book. It's meant to take you through the whole Bible in three years' time, and all it does is ask you questions. So you'll read a, a, a section of the Bible. It'll give you, read this part today, whatever, and then it'll just ask you questions, and you just write answers to those questions, but having to write an answer really makes you pay attention and focus um, and remember. And so that's a, you'll, you'll learn a lot uh, actually going through that. Um, oh, I put journaling, let's see, journaling, books, uh, quick overview. Sorry, I'm reading, I gotta find my place in my notes. Quick overview. Um, it is good to read the Bible slowly and piece by piece by piece, but sometimes that can kind of gum up our works a little bit and we, we need to read a, a larger section. Um, one thing you can do is try to read the Bible in a year. It can be done. It takes, it takes a lot of reading every day, but less than you would think. The Bible is not as long as we, we sometimes, it sometimes seems. And in a year, you can read the whole Bible. There are Bible reading plans available online. I can get you one or give you one. And you can read the whole Bible in a year. Um, or just say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to read this in the next two to three years, a little bit at a time. Um, I can even help you if you want uh, to build a Bible reading plan that might work for you, uh, if you, uh, you want to do that. But it's amazing. You, you can read the Bible pretty quickly. When you read a larger section or even the whole thing, um, it really does help you then go back and get go back for the details because now I have the bigger picture in my head, so that can be good. Um, audio Bible. 
audio Bible, if you have like version on your phone as the app version, um, you can listen to for free uh, the audio Bible. Uh, so somebody reading the, the whole Bible. And that's uh, good for, for two things. One is if you're an auditory learner and you learn better by listening than by reading, um, that's a great way to, to hear the Bible. Two, because I'm not an auditory learner, by the way, but I found that if I hear the Bible, I'm like, oh, this sounds different from what I'm used to. There's something about somebody else reading it to you that you go, oh, huh, I hadn't, wow, that's helpful. And so, I mean, you're cleaning your pool, you're driving, whatever, you can be listening to the Bible. That used to cost a lot. Now you can do it for free. So uh, you can take advantage of that. And then um, what's pretty common, a pretty common way is reading a chapter or what's called a pericope. I'll explain that in a second or a paragraph in a day um, or maybe a couple times a day, maybe in the morning and at night. Um, a chapter is pretty basic. It's, it'll say, right, three. It's like, that's chapter three. A pericope is uh, a fun word to say, and it is a section in the Bible that's more, more of a single story or, or a single concept not necessarily a full chapter. Uh, so if your Bible has headings, if, it'll, if it has, you know, you see little like bold lines in there that says, you know, um, Moses and Jethro, or you see um, uh, the 10th plague, or you see, um, you know, uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. That, that, what that is, is it's, it's, it's saying, hey, in this section, that's all we're gonna talk about, and it's called a pericope. Um, you could, uh, you could uh, do what's called cross-referencing, and cross-referencing is a little more advanced, but what that is, is when you find something, you'll, you'll, you'll be amazed how quickly you start seeing similarities, and you're like, I feel like I heard that before. You get a little Bible deja vu, and so you're gonna read something and go, oh, well, that kind of connects over here. So you write down, where did you see that before? And it, you kind of get yourself on a little scavenger hunt. That's a little more advanced, but as you go, um, it really does help build, we talked about that network of truth, you'll be surprised how quickly you're, you're able to start picking up on, I heard this somewhere else, where was that? Um, and then hand copying, exactly what it sounds like. Um, to slow down and focus uh, and make the Bible your own, you might copy out uh, a section of scripture, maybe in that journal, um, and just, just write it out. Uh, I do that when I prepare to teach, it helps me um, own it as though if I were writing this, like this is now I'm responsible to, to, to know this and teach this. Um, and it makes me go slow. It makes me appreciate what's there, the way it's written, the wording, the flow. Uh, so you could, you could try that. I don't recommend a couple things. I don't recommend just flipping your Bible open or, you know, opening it to the wind and seeing where it turns and reading that for the day. I don't recommend that partly because then you're going to miss out on, the Bible is structured and it flows from thing to thing and thought to thought. And you're missing that if you just go randomly, right? So it'd be, you know, if you ever like you've walked in and, and maybe someone's watching a TV show and, and you're, you're standing there and you're, you're interested, um, but you don't have any idea what's going on because you weren't there for the, any of the rest of it. And so you kind of go away. Well, when we come to the Bible, you don't want to just jump into the middle. Let me rephrase that. You can jump into the middle of the Bible. You don't want to just jump in, read, you know, five sentences and then jump somewhere else tomorrow. You're, you're, it's too confused and chaotic. I would really recommend pick a book and work your way through that book, but take a little bit, uh, a little bit every day. Um, where could you begin? Hey, I want to read my Bible. Where could I begin? Here's some recommendations. One is the book of John. So the book of John, um, here's what's going to happen. You're going to read the very beginning of chapter one and you're going to go, why did Andrew recommend the book of John? I have no, what's going, no idea what's going on. Keep reading. You will. But the, the very beginning is confusing. It throws people off. Hint, hint. It's talking about Jesus who has existed forever and has now come to the world, but the world rejected him. And then it's going to give you the story of Jesus' life. Okay. Read the book of John and say, who is Jesus? Or any of what we call the Gospels, the stories of Jesus' life. Matthew, Mark, or Luke are the other three. Any of those and say, okay, I want to see more about who this Jesus is. Uh, I would start there. Some people do want to start in the very beginning, which is Genesis, and they want to get a sense of the story going through. You can absolutely do that. It's absolutely good to get that story. 
the Old Testament is hard and is more confusing, uh, but you can absolutely do that. Uh, but you might, you might want to start with John. Uh, you might also start with Psalms or Proverbs. Uh, Psalms are uh, prayers, songs, hymns uh, written about God and what he's doing. So you could start there and say, what do I see about God and what do I see about my situations? Um, you could also start in Proverbs, which is um, wise sayings. There are 31 Proverbs, so most months you could read one chapter of Proverbs per day for a month. Um, but uh, it doesn't, it does, it's not, a, not earth shattering where you start, but, but I would recommend one of those places to start. It's going to be easier uh, on you. Okay. Um, some helpful resources there in your, in, your, in your thing. When we get to class, we're going to practice going through a passage of the Bible and seeing what we see there. So we'll do some practice together. Um, and then my, my homework for you. I know you had, you're like, I just watched all these videos and now I have homework. Yeah, I want you with whatever time you have left before class. Now, if you're watching this on the way in, I guess disregard, but um, commit to for the next week. I guess you could do this even if it's the next lesson the next week. Commit to reading any portion of the Bible every single day for the next seven days. Um, don't jump around, but take a take a place. Uh, if, if, if you're like, I can only think about those seven days. Maybe it's Psalms or Proverbs. I don't know. But take something and for every day. Uh, I want you to read just a little bit every day. Um, again, as always, we have a memory verse. Psalm 119, 15 through 16 says here in the ESV, I will meditate on your precepts or your, your commandments, your law, and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes or your, your rules, your, your, the expression of your ways. I will not forget your word. And so... Uh, Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the entire Bible, and it is all about the Bible. It's all about why we would love God's Word, and I would pray, phrase it this way, love God in His Word. So God bless you as you begin to discover what's there. It's going to be hard. Don't quit. Ask questions of the Bible and of people who can help you. Continue on, and you're going to see amazing things about the Lord and what He has for your life in His Word.